can over there. Oh, I just broke my pen. Hello. Hello again. Hey. Hi. Let's just get this started. Um, I'm gonna begin with the fact that I'm... This is probably going to be the most biased movie preview, whatever you want to call it, summary thing that you are ever going to watch. This, God, this movie was so good. Um, God, if this video gets removed because, well, that I'm not allowed to do this, um, I'll probably look it up before I upload it. But God forbid I wasted probably like half an hour or 45 minutes of my entire life on this video. Well, it's going to be the most biased video you've ever seen because I love Cloverfield. I love the Cloverfield, like the first Cloverfield movie, I, and I loved this one. This one was amazing, like 100 out of 10. That is the rating that I would give it. It also doesn't help that I really love horror and suspense movies anyway, so uh, comment below your favorite horror movie and suspense movie because I'll probably do my best to watch it. I prefer found film movies. Now, don't ask me why. I know they're terrible. I know they're probably, they're all shaky and whatnot, but I can't even explain to you why. I love them. I don't know. They're just my favorite. So let's get started because this video is probably going to be a little bit long, so bear with me, but it was a good movie, so let's get started. So the very first scene is you are following a girl that you eventually learn that her name is Michelle. She has eventually left her house, and you can kind of tell that she's like leaving a fiance, and she's just driving. So you're following Michelle, and it's so peaceful, and then all of a sudden there's just a loud crashing noise, scared the shit out of me and my boyfriend. But um, she essentially wakes up, and she is underground, as she can hear a car above her, and she's in a tiny concrete room attached to a ivy. So, of course, she's freaking out, and she tries to call for help with her cell phone, and there's no connection whatsoever. So, a man come in, comes in. He's a really big guy, alright? You eventually find out that his name is Howard. He's huge. He breathes from his mouth. He's, like, not... He hasn't, sha he hasn't shaved and looks like years. He looks like he smells bad, and he grunts when he stands and sits. And, like, that sort of guy. Like... I mean, obviously, you can look up a picture of him, but I'll put a picture of the actor right here because I cannot remember the guy's, the actor's name for my life. But I'm learning. <laughs> Bear with me. So she is essentially told that she needs to calm down and that she broke her leg and that she needs to eat as he has given her a plate of food. She needs to eat and she needs to heal in order to get better. So he, he gives her a pair of crutches and leaves, and you can hear that the door is locked, and it's this big steel door. So, of course, she doesn't eat. And she, Michelle, is the Ripley, is the Ripley of our day. Like, she is the alien fighter, the freaking, I don't give a shit, I'm going to survive chick. Like, I can only hope that I'm, like, a quarter of how amazing she is in trying to survive. So, she sharpens the edge of her, um, crutches. She sharpens the end of it and essentially tries to set the place on fire so that the guy will come into the room. She tries to stab him. He's huge. She overpowers her, and he tranquilizes her and puts her back to sleep. So she's, uh, eventually able to get up, and she walks out of the she walks out of the room with her crutches a new one and she meets a guy named Emmett and Emmett has a broken arm and she is essentially like oh my god what happened to you and Emmett goes oh god no I broke my arm getting in so she oh and I'm sorry before this Howard actually explains to her he sits down with her and is like you need to stop escaping because there's nothing for you to escape to and he explains that there is nothing out there left for her. That there is a war going on upstairs and they there's nothing for her to return to. The air is poisoned. It will kill her. If she goes up there, it will disintegrate her. And that uh, she just needs to calm down and that they're probably going to be here for a couple of years underground in this little tiny home in a way. 
So anyway, she meets Emmett and Emmett explains to her that he helped Howard build this place and he was like, oh hell no, I'm gonna die up there. I need to get in here. So uh, Howard felt bad and let Emmett in and Emmett essentially fought his way in and that's why he broke his arm. So uh, time passes, they go out into the front and the first clue of Howard's craziness is shown. Uh, Michelle trips with her crutches and Emmett catches her and Howard screams, no touching, no touching whatsoever, don't, no touch, like, like he freaks out. So obviously they're already like, oh, that's really fucking weird, you know, like, that was weird. But of course, like, they essentially feel like they owe their lives to him, or at least Emmett does and Michelle's like, this guy's batshit crazy. So, <coughs> Uh, there's a scene where Howard can tell that Michelle doesn't really, uh, believe him, and he brings her up, uh, to the door, and it is one big door, a little space in between, and then another big door. He has the keys on his side, and he, op he shows her that he, and this is on a farm, he has two pigs that are, like, right outside of the little underground station, and there are pigs that have totally disintegrated their like eyeballs are like falling out and they're bloody and like just gross like it's really freaking gross okay so michelle is like oh my god that's really weird but she's still not convinced because she's like this crazy guy probably just killed those pigs and like made that so that no one would try to escape you know so um essentially she during their little dinner she does everything she can to piss off howard and touches emmett's hand and she um, Howard stands up, gets in her face, and is like, say sorry. Say you're gonna behave now. Say sorry. This is not how you, this is not how you say, uh, thank you for me saving your life. So she's like, oh, sorry. She has the keys. So she stands up, hits him with a bottle, and runs up the stairs, gets in the, in between, locks, um, locks Howard inside, and is turning and looking through this little window and is about to essentially run out. Biggest jump scare of my entire life. I screamed like a little vagina. I screamed so loud. A what? Like she sees a car and right up from like underneath, like she was like sitting there, comes up. Ha there's a woman. Half of her face is totally disintegrated. Her eyes like red and like gross. And she like looks like she's been like in a war. And she's like, oh my God, please let me in. I'm begging you. And key phrase here she says it barely touched me so we'll figure out what that means later but so essentially michelle is like oh my god i need to let her in howard is like no she's contaminated she'll kill us all so michelle is like wow i guess howard was right i there we can't go out there because obviously look at that woman she died she's going to die out there so cut scene and they go and there's a scene, oh, this scene was so messed up, because you like Howard. Howard trusts Michelle enough to re-stitch the wound that she caused when she hit him with the bottle, and they're stitching it, and they're bonding, and there's huge, there's like a huge montage of Emmett, Howard, and Michelle getting along, doing puzzles together, and the air goes out. So, Michelle has to go inside the air vents in order to fix the air and reset it. And so this actually, by going through the vents, she actually goes into, like, the farm home. Like, the house of which, um, Howard used to live in. But, uh, so she goes up, goes and, like, resets it. And she realizes that there's, like, a ladder leading up to the outside. So she climbs up. And, of course, it's locked. And she sees carved inside on the window practic uh, like almost like bloody is help and so she climbs down and hits her foot on an earring so flashback to a couple of scenes before when they were all like buddy buddy and like montaging and whatnot um howard shows a video or a picture to michelle of his daughter daughter megan and Lo and behold, Megan is wearing this earring. So, um, obviously the stories of his wife taking Megan away from him, uh, and them not coming to the house, or to the little hideout, was not true. So, Michelle goes back, 
puts it in her pocket obviously and goes to Emmett when Howard is like off doing whatever and she's like I think Howard killed his daughter and she goes and finds the book where the picture is lodged and goes look it's Megan look those are the earrings that she's wearing and Emmett goes whoa that's not a girl named Megan that's a girl that my little sister used to go to school with she disappeared and no one found her so they're like, oh my god, Howard kidnapped this little girl and probably killed her. So everyone's like, oh shit, we have to get out of here because this guy's crazy and he will probably kill one of us too. So another big old montage. They all are collecting stuff. They find um, his, um, ooh, lots of ums, Howard's army books or whatever he was in, the armed forces. And they learn how to make their own gas-proof suit. During this happy little montage, you know, they're, you know, they're doing like crazy suspicious things. They're putting together this thing in order to escape and they're playing this game where, I don't know, I'm sure there's a name for it, but there's a game where you hold up a little card and you have to guess what the two words are and it put together the two words make like a thing, like an object, right? Oh man, so the first part was just really freaking creepy. They are the word, so the first one he's like a oh, pygmy, so Howard is guessing, 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 and he eventually gets little. Um, Emmett goes, okay, so Michelle is a, so Howard goes, girl, and he goes, okay, yes, but Michelle is grown up, so what is she? <sighs> Howard throws out the weirdest freaking answers. He goes, little princess um pretty she's uh and he's like throwing out these weird things and you're just like what the hell is he saying so of course you know just more crazy just more and more and more crazy and so michelle it's howard's turn to make them guess what his word is and he goes okay he goes i know what you guys are doing and they're like he goes, I know what you're doing. I watch you when you sleep. What are you doing? I know. I know everything. I see everything. And they're just like, and Emmett goes, oh my god, dude, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Emmett's about to freaking blow their cover. And Michelle just yells, Santa Claus. The word Santa Claus. And Howard just goes, yeah, good job. You're right. Oh my god. And so they work on this, work on this, work on this, and Howard one day is like, hey, I need help. So they open up like a little cabinet, they bring it, they open it, they bring it over to the bathroom, and it, he opens it up and it's filled with acid. Howard essentially is like, I found these. And he holds up these tools, the tools that they were using, and he goes, what are you guys doing with them? So. Um, of course, they're like, oh my god. He's threatening them and yelling at them, and <sighs> Emmett takes the blow. And honestly, you could you could have seen that coming, but it's still so sad because you finally like Emmett, you know? So, Emmett takes the blow, and Howard just goes, I forgive you. Just shoots him in the face. Like, no, just shoots him. So, of course, they're, like, inside, like, practically kind of like a tank and the walls are really condensed so the sounds bouncing off the walls and it just rings it's ringing and Michelle is obviously screaming and crying and Howard shows his true colors besides you know of course killing Emmett he goes over and hugs Michelle stroking her and whispering in her ear and goes it's okay now we can do whatever now we can do all of the things that we couldn't do with that guy around. Now we can have a perfect family together down here. <gasps> holy shit! Like, just climax, man. Like, holy crap. So, ugh. So that, like, messed with me. So Michelle, so it splits, and Michelle is in her room, and she's looking at Emmett's pictures and whatever, whatever. And she hears Howard essentially coming to her room, and she freaks out because she, she was working on the suit. 
and she pushes everything under her thing and every single time she does this like I am stressed like do it faster like push it faster and of course like eventually she like finally gets it done you know whatever puts it in the and she puts it in the vent of course now this is the weird part Howard comes in and with ice cream and he goes I figured that we would do something special tonight I put yours in a bowl Megan always liked hers in a bowl so I put yours in a bowl too we're gonna have dessert before dinner and the camera pans up and this guy is wearing a nice collared shirt and he's shaved he looks like a freaking baby's bottom his face is smooth he looks really freaking weird like he looks even more gross and weird because he looks like a straight-up pedophile pedophile is a pedophile whatever anyway Howard is turning to leave and uh, a bolt falls from the vent where she hid the mask so it falls and Howard's like oh why'd that happen and you're you're sitting on the edge of your seat and you're just like holding your breath like oh my god he's gonna find it what's gonna happen oh my god at least this is just me like oh my god it's such a good scene and like ah this movie was such a good movie like it was such a good movie um he like kind of puts his arms up and like feels for the air and closes it and he turns and looks at Michelle and goes why did this bolt fall and Michelle just goes oh god I don't know it does that all the time <laughs> the sleeve is poking out from under her bed <laughs> so of course Howard is like what is that stand up get up what is that what are you doing and so she, um, not entirely sure what happens. I think she, like, pushes him or something, but she grabs the thing. Oh, no, just kidding. She runs out, and he chases after her, and they run out, and, oh, my God, this messed with me. She goes into the office slash bathroom, and Emmett, his body, is sitting in a, like, little contained vat, still dissolving in the acid like oh so just terrible so of course Michelle's like ah and she like screams and she jumps up onto the bed and Howard is standing in the doorway and is like Michelle get down here what are you doing and she and oh man I wish I remembered her cool kick-ass cool girl line her kick-ass final line whatever um punchline the punchline freaking punchline uh she says something really cool and clever I don't remember what it was but she pushes the vat and essentially it bur obviously it burns Howard's feet and he falls forward like face first into this acid so she jumps over him it touches the lamp cord and so everything catches fire and so she's running in to her room she grabs the suit ties it up ties it to um and she goes into the kitchen and is going to go into the vent so that she can go up through the top oh and she grabs a air canister you know the little thingies that you do to clean the keyboard apparently if you put that on like metal it'll freeze it so much that you can break it and it makes it brittle so she's going into the vent and or she's making her way to the vent and in this like narrow hall, hall hallway this gave me so much anxiety like it was like, you know, you're scared of something at the end of the hallway. So Howard is standing at the end of this hallway. Half of his face is burned and he's like limping and he's just like, Michelle, come back here. And it's so creepy. He doesn't have a British accent. I don't know why I gave him a British accent. And so Michelle's like, fuck no. And so she like pushes all of the food onto him and she jumps over him. And obviously they have to add like that little theatrical like twitch of all the food. So obviously you know Howard's still alive. And she uh, ties the thing to her foot and gets into the vent. She's crawling, she's crawling as if it wasn't claustrophobic enough and scary enough. She's crawling, she's crawling. Knife! Like Howard is stabbing the vents in order to freaking kill her, you know. And now this is like where it kind of gets a little stretched, you know, like if you stab enough. And like you're well you're gonna hit something you know like obviously she should have died here but you know no it's the heroin heroin yeah heroin so now she keeps going keeps crawling crawls 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 and so she makes it she makes it to the top 
and she uh, freezes the thing, boom, boom, she hits it, she, and she gets, and, oh, and she puts on the mask and everything, and she goes up, and she's outside, and she looks up into the sky, and there are birds, so she's like, how are the birds alive if there's so much horrible air? So, she, I, I wouldn't have risked it, but you know, whatever, freaking Michelle Ripley, takes off her mask, and she can breathe fine. So, there are two cars out there, the crazy lady who tried to break in, and, um, Howard's car, uh, truck. So, ugh, woo, I got all my notes here. So, she, she escapes, and she climbs up on top of the car as she sees, like, a plane, plane in the distance. Waves her arms, she's like, oh my god, I'm here, I need help, hi, you're probably looking for me. This thing turns, and you just see and look at it, and you're like, that is not a human-made thing. And then you see something drop from it, and Michelle's just so fucking witty. Um, she just goes, shit. You know, like, as if she hasn't dealt with enough at this, mo at this point. This fucking thing falls from it, and she just knows that shit's after her. So it's fucking chasing her, and she runs into the into the barn, closes the door, and it's trying to get in. You know, it's trying to attack her, and she sees the dead body of the lady. And so, ugh, I was so scared. I was like, she's still alive. She's still alive. She's gonna come up. She's gonna come alive and scare the shit out of me again. But no, she's dead. And she searches through her pockets and gets the keys. Oh my god! I just never would have thought of this. Michelle sets off the alarm so that the creature, um goes to the car. Now, to describe this creature, I can only put it together as an armadillo-like kind of shell, like, but a bunch of them. Like, okay, so you know when you zoom in on a shark and the skin is like little chain mail sort of thing? Just like that. And its face is like like those little parasites, you know, and like it's kind of closed, but then like once it kind of like opens up, like it's like mouth is like shows kind of like an uncircumcised penis, you know, no big deal. All right, so obviously that thing is like chasing after her. It goes after the car and she gets out and runs, like just starts running in some random direction, just like away from this damn thing, right? I mean, like, heck yeah, I do the same exact shit. Um, and the freaking spaceship is there, like this weird spaceship looking, like I don't even know how to explain it. So the spaceship like comes out and it like lets out this gas, like this green gas. Let's backtrack. Remember what that lady said? She was like, it barely touched me. Obviously this is the shit that burned her. This is what's killing things and disintegrating them. Now, this is what I absolutely loved. Um, it zooms in on the gas hitting fire, and the fire goes like crazy, you know, like it's like perfect. <laughs> so it uh, it keeps moving towards her, and so she um, she has the mask like attached to her, and she puts it on her head, and she it's like up, oh, and she's fine. She like passes over her, and nothing happens, you know. Oh my god! So she's like, oh, everything's fine. Oh. Just kidding, the fucking tiny little alien is still there, obviously, you know. So it runs towards her and she goes into the truck and closes the door, and this thing clamps down on her mask and takes it. So she's like, oh my god, now I don't have any protection from that thingy. But that's like the least of her worries. The big ass alien ship turns around and starts picking up the truck, okay, with its big tentacle things and picks her up. And she rolls down the, or she like, she's looking up through like the big window, you know, like they use and look through to drive. And it's a freaking alien mouth. Like it's like, you know, like it's trying to freaking eat her. So she's like, oh my God, I, what the hell, you know? So again, a little bit of a coincidence, but you know, it's kind of not because of Howard, of who Howard was as a person. Um, he had alcohol in the car, so she's like, oh my god, I'm gonna Molotov cocktail this bitch. So she grabs some papers that were sitting on the floor, grabs that, 
and she had in the beginning of the movie has matches so she uses like her last freaking match and like lights this thing on fire sticks her head out the window and waits until she's like five feet away from this damn thing and throws the Molotov cocktail in there and it closes its mouth and explodes now, the reason why most people were like, oh, well, why did it explode? It's like an alien. Like, why did it do that? Okay. It did that because if you think back to the beginning, the gas it's filled with is flammable. So it exploded. Falls, gets knocked out, whatever. The little alien runs away, I guess. And she comes out and still has the keys for the lady's car and goes into the lady's car and is driving. She, like, drives. She leaves. Ooh, theatrical moment where the ten clover or the Cloverfield Lane little mailbox is hit and it's like in the middle of the road and they zoom in on it like ooh, as if you didn't know what movie you were already watching, you know, whatever. So she keeps driving and she hears on the radio that there are people alive in the city. So she has the decision to go somewhere by herself or go to the city towards where everything was happening to help people. And so she turns and goes straight towards the city to help all of these people. Most epic part of the movie, all right? Lightning flashes and you see the biggest spaceship up in the sky over this city. And you're like, oh my God, that's another really big ass alien. So. Um, yeah, that's essentially how the movie ends. She's driving towards the city. So, I'm really, really hoping for a uh, third movie. God, that would be amazing. You know, follow kind of like an alien footsteps. You know, lots of, lo lots and lots of movies about it. Hopefully they don't get worse like the alien movies did. You know, hmm. But, hoping for the best. Honestly, it was a great movie. I loved this movie. I mean, again, I'm really biased. I love the Cloverfield movies, but no, no matter how biased I am, I significantly liked this movie. I had a lot of high hopes, and it met every single one of them, you know? And, um, <clears throat> I really liked that it wasn't only about killing aliens and, like, going around fighting aliens. Still like Cloverfield 1, though, even though that was what it was about. But, um... It was psychological thriller, it was an alien thriller, it was sci-fi, it was, it pulled everything together so well, and it was just so interesting, and there wasn't a single moment where I was bored. It was just so, so, so good. Um, I really, I really, 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 like, I love con con bleh, continuity, I love continuity, and this movie had it. Everything was explained. Everything was connected. Every like there wasn't a moment where you're like, oh, why did that happen? You know, it was it, everything connected at the end. All of the dots, all of the pictures, it all just came together into this amazing flick. And I'm I like could not, I couldn't. I there's nothing I would change for this movie. Maybe the one tiny, 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 tiny little um, complaint that I would have about the movie is that sometimes. It was a little unrealistic, you know, um, because Michelle's kind of, like, little. Oops, excuse me. Um, she's, like, she's, like, very thin, very small framed, um, and there's just a lot of stuff that she did that I don't know she would have been able to do, like, throw that far, like, throw in that call cocktail Molotov, like, that couldn't have been easy, you know, but anyway. Besides that, I mean, it kind of has to be, or else she would have died within the first like encounter with Howard like let's be serious here so it just kind of has to be that way it's unique it's out there and it's still about aliens like oh my god but you know um my favorite part about the entire movie was just the fact like the very small little plain fact that they kept the sounds of a clo of the first Cloverfield monster and you can hear it while they were underneath so I'm hoping that we get to see the Cloverfield monster or monsters, you know, there's a lot of uh, conspiracy around that, like there might have been like a mother and a child. Needless to say, I loved this movie. If I haven't said it enough, I'll say it again. I loved this movie, 100 out of 10. I hope you guys enjoyed as much as I did. Comment below if you watched the movie because you saw this and you were like, heck yeah, sounds like an amazing freaking movie because Ali said so. Yeah. So let me know.
And yeah. Bye. Bye cut. Ooh. Oh goodness. Well, I hope that everything is okay. So anyway, I decided I was going to make a video, um I guess it's kind of well timed. I think